is up YouTube I am your friendly neighborhood and man 64 we have reached it the apex the pinnacle everything that could possibly be anything in the Mario Kart dumb I don't know this is Mario Kart 8 deluxe we finally reached it after 67 episodes of just putzing around and dicking around we have made it to the apex of the Mario Kart franchise, that being Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, the most recent game, and in all retrospect, honestly, the best Mario Kart game in the franchise. This is, a, this is basically an example of what it takes to constantly be trying to improve and eventually perfect your craft. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the culmination of a few decades of experimenting and trying out and trying to figure out exactly what goes where, how good what is, how good the racing should be, how stiff it should be, how slow the recovery should be. This is the culmination of all of the things that Mario Kart is best known for wrapped up in one massive, absolutely daunting, ta daunting package. And I do mean daunting because by God, this game is massive. This is going to probably be the longest portion of the console tour by the time everything's all said and done. It's going to be... Yeah, it's going to be huge. Now, I will mention, I did want to plan on not recording this until the stuff, the, uh, the final bits of the DLC were out. But it is coming out within the next week, so I figured I'd want to get a head start and jump on as much of this as we could get done in one sitting now for the sake of this Porsche this Mario Kart game we're gonna be doing quite a lot we're gonna be doing the single-player mode obviously where it has the Grand Prix which is massive there are 24 cups in total to take part in 12 in the original game and another 12 DLCs that were added we're not gonna be doing time trials because well there's really no... I mean, I could do time trials if I wanted to, you know, draw out the project if I need more time to do another game like Pokemon Scarlet, for example, but I really shouldn't. Um, in, instead of doing verses like this, we might do it as a finale, but as you guys are well aware, I plan instead to take on players online. So I will do some random online races... I also have footage that I will be able to use that I've recorded with some of my friends, including the Weekend Gamers. Uh, I'll also be recording with Shiny Stuffs, potentially a few others, Blue Hedgehog Man 17, Mild, and anybody else that feels like they're interested. I might do it as a finale that I might just race on my own, but we'll just see where things go from there. And yes, we will be doing battling because, well... What Mario Kart game would be complete without battling? All of them, even going back to the smelly Nintendo, Super Nintendo days, they have them. But for the sake of argument, we are going to tackle the, you know, the regular Grand Prix. And as you can see, there are five modes now, as 200cc was added. And 200cc, as you would expect, is lightning fast. So fast even that, as you can see, I have not actually even finished it. I've only done six of the courses that, in that. You don't really gain anything much except for, I think, the 100% finished uh, starting screen, but I really don't care about that. I did it for other Mario Kart games, but that's because you had to unlock them. And as you can see, I've done Mirror Mode for every single one of the ones, including the DLCs. And I've done 150cc for everything, except the last two DLCs, because they're not out yet. But for the sake of argument... We'll be sticking like we do with normal, with the 150cc. And look at this roster of racers you have. You have your bog standards. The usual eight suspects are here. Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad, Yoshi, Bowser, Wario, and Donkey Kong. But on top of that, you also have new characters. We have Rosalina. We have Cat. We have Tanuki Mario. We have Cat Peach. We have Birdo, the festering wart. PD Piranha came back, King Boo is back, my girl Toadette's back, Shy Guy, Lakitu's even a driver now, Wiggler, Pink Gold Peach, Metal Mario, good lord, look at all these racers that we have access to, even people who have never been in a Mario game, such as Inkling Girl, Inkling Boy, both obviously from Splatoon, 
Link from some franchise. Who cares? Probably some lesser known franchise that no one's ever heard of. And of course the villager, the female villager, and Isabel from Animal Crossing. And I can even be myself if I want. But why the hell would I want to be myself? I'm scared of myself. So let's be Toadette instead. Now, from Mario Kart 7 onward, there was customization. You did not just choose which car you wanted to draw, drive. Instead, you also got to choose which... Well, you got to choose your, bail, your build, you got to choose your wheels, and you got to choose a glider. Because, yes, gliding has been added in this game. Now, you can press the plus button to look for all of the potential stats that your car might have. You have a GLA here. You have a W25 Silver Arrow and the 300 SL Roadster. All actual cars. And then you got shit like the Blue Falcon. A Tanuki Kart. Mario's B-Dasher from DS. Streetle. P-Wing. Koopa Clown Car. On top of that, there's also the standard bikes, which are back in the game. Not nearly as good as they used to be, but still pretty darn good. And then you got the ATVs. The ATVs are where the game gets extra fun. Because they are some of the more broken cars in the game. Especially if you know how to properly use them. And for the sake of this one race, so I can show them off, I will use an ATV. Now, as you can see here, we each car has five stats. Speed is obviously its top speed. Acceleration is how quickly it accelerates to that top speed. Weight is how much you can get thrown around. Handling is how easily it controls. Traction is obviously turning. And how well it can turn. Now, there are so many options that you can have for the for the uh, ATVs. Well, not so many. A decent amount of them. And for the sake of argument, I will use the Wiggler Wagon with the GLA tires and the Gold Glider. I'll be going back to carts afterwards, but we'll see what happens from there. As you can see, there are 24 total cups. These two, the Acorn Cup and the Spiny Cup, have not yet been released, but everything else has been released. Well, by the time that this video goes up, all of them will have been released, but you get the idea. Now, we're going to do each of these courses one by one. And as usual, we'll go mushroom, shell, flower, banana, star, leaf, etc., etc., all the way up to we get to the Bell Cup. And then we jump to the DLC. So we will be here for quite a while. But for the sake of argument, we will start at the Mushroom Cup. Which I think I'd safe to say is one of the Mushroom Cups that I've done the most and I adore the most. Chiefly because a lot of these courses were in the demo that was in most targets at the time when the, when the Wii U had just launched. And Mario Kart had just launched. So yeah. We're having, we're gonna have, we're gonna have a good time here. I, th I feel, I feel we're gonna have a very good time. But I think, as I said earlier in this video, this is the Mario Kart game that really is a culmination of years of trial, error, and experimentation. Whether you like, whether you agree with the statement or not, the other Mario Kart games all have big flaws. You've got. Super Nintendo, which was just a game full of flaws. You have the N64, where your cars just randomly spin out. And sometimes they're difficult to control. Then you have uh, Mario Kart Super Circuit, which has many of the same exact issues that, that get, uh, the N64 one had, because it was more or less a port. Then you have Double Dash, which messed with the recovery a bit. Mario Kart DS, is, to me, is honestly the closest we had to perfection. And even then it still had its own issues. The item balance was pretty damn awful. You would get hit with blue shells like every 30 seconds in that. Which is precisely why they've changed things up a bit. Now Mario Kart Wii was a little too loose with the controls, as we all are fully aware, and required basic like pinpoint perfection for you to be able to, you know, basically do anything. Which is not fun. Oh, wow, really? How did I miss that? Good lord. And then Mario Kart 7 is more or less a little bit closer in those regards. Since we're not going to be playing it, I could give a little bit of a mention to it. My issue with Mario Kart 7 is 
again, it's a trial and error game. There's a lot of experimentation going on in that game. So, like, they're just experimenting with everything that's now commonplace in Mario Kart, such as the coins. As you can tell, they're back. But instead of them being basically destroying your chances to drive, the coins give you little speed boosts. So your car reaches its top speed a little bit faster the more the more gold coins you have. Instead of make it being a hindrance, it makes the racing a lot more fun for you to be able to, you know, just let loose and have, well, fun. Now, unlike with the other Mario Kart games where I was showing off the characters, I think I'm only going to do what I did with Mario Kart Wii here. So I'm going to start with Toadette being a lightweight, then I might do a midweight, then I might do a heavyweight. I have not decided yet, and that's mainly because there is, there is no cars that are cut off or limited by weight class. All of the cars ex grow or shrink based on your personal preference. There is no, like, you don't have to be held back by certain things. You just drive right in and you're fine. So I could be the Wiggler Wagon if I want with any size racer. I could do it with Wiggler if I want. It looks weird as hell, but, you know. And yes, as you can tell, a lot of things have been changed since other Mario Kart games. You can now drive underwater. You can now drive, as you can see, our wheels have moved to the side. That means we're doing zero gravity racing. Which means basically what you would mean. Basically whatever you think it would mean. Basically. You can now drive with everything. You can basically drive going upside down, going from side to side, floating in the air. They changed a hell of a lot with Mario Kart, and that's why I think... Even if they continue the franchise past this, I think this is the pinnacle. Anything after this will just be, like, not as good, you know? Unless, of course, they go ham on the next one. But this one, this game is just perfection. Hell, even, honestly, part of me did not want to do Mario Kart 8 itself on the Wii U as a game. Specifically because even that game has its issues. And the issues with Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U is basically how reliant you have to be on the gamepad and the gamepad while it's useful for like some things it is not particularly useful for uh for mario kart it's very bulky doesn't really feel natural to drive with i basically got used to it after a while but there's no reason for you to have to get used to it that should the game it should just the controls should be a lot more natural fitting than they were in those regards. But, like I said, this game is basically the culmination of years of trial and error. And I am just so freaking happy that we'll be able to play it, experience it, and see what everything, what all the big fuss up is with all regards to all of these courses. Because yes... Honestly, there is not a single course in this game, including the ones that got announced, that I would sit there and go, wow, why would you, Why would this one be in the game? Yes, there are some courses in this game I'm not the biggest fan of, but the, the, normal, the original courses for this game are really freaking good. I know I haven't really mentioned it much, but some of these are just so innovative, so interesting... The way things are constructed, the way things are done. I mean, look at this one. It's literally just a giant a, a giant course that's running through freaking candy. And sweet stuff. It's going to put you in a diabetic coma. But honestly, since Toadette is my main, I feel like I should be her for like the vast majority of this game. If not the entirety of it. Because, well, we don't get a lot of my girl. Toadette is sort of in like the same Waluigi hole where Toadette will likely never get her own game, though she is playable in a lot of side games. I know she's playable in uh, Captain Toad, but I don't imagine when I'm ever going to play freaking Captain Toad. Like, I'm not even joking, like, I'd like ever. Maybe at some point in like the 60s or 70s in terms of LPs, but like right now it's not even on my, it's not, a bl not even a blip on the radar at this point.
But like, yeah, there's no Toadette. Like, Toadette's not gonna get her own game anytime soon, unless unless she appears in that new Princess Peach game that's set to come out in a few uh, in a few months. But that doesn't look like she's gonna be in it either. Looks like it's just her Peach, Princess Peach getting her own spinoff. Ooh, a Mega Horn, nice. Uh, there are a few new items in the game, as you can tell, namely the Mega Horn, which. Well, neutralizes any threat that comes your way, including blue shells. So it's always prudent of you to want to hold on to the Mega Horn as long as you physically can. Because it shields you from things, it knocks opponents over if you pass them while you use it. It's one of the most useful items in the entirety of the Mario Kart franchise. And yeah, I freaking adore this item, and I think it was a fantastic addition. On top of that, there is also... A Piranha Plant, which gives you a little bit of an extra boost every time you use it, while also chomping on opponents and eating potential obstacles in your way. However, there are issues with it. The biggest, in my opinion, being the fact that you're extremely vulnerable to attacks from the rear with a chain with the Piranha Plant. It's very similar to um, the Chain Chomp in Double Dash that you got with Baby Mario and Baby Luigi. Where that it's really useful for recovering at times, and then at other times, it's just, you know, not that good. But hey, what are you going to do? That's the, that's one of the, that's just one of the good elements of it. Uh, there's also a boomerang, which you can throw at opponents multiple times, I believe up to three times, that you can knock opponents out and stun them for a little, for a short time, until, obviously, you are free to go. And on top of that, the last and arguably, in my opinion, the best item that was introduced in this game, because I know the Fire Flower was in the original Mario Kart game, the best, most original item in this game, as you one would expect, is the... I don't, I don't know if it's exactly called like the Lucky 8s or the Super 8 or something like that, but... Basically, you get eight items instead of one. You'll get a banana, you'll get a blooper, you'll get a mushroom, you'll get a star, you'll get a bomb, you'll get both shells, and one other item. Future me might add it, future me might not add it, it all depends on his mood. He's a very moody little bitch sometimes. And lazy, too. Perfect. And one thing I gotta point out that they did really well with this game is the score. I know, like, I can't really hear it and enjoy it in this game, but good lord, is the, is the musical score in this game fan freaking tastic. And it's not even like one of those that, one of those musical scores where it's just like, oh, that's, that's, it's a nice racing score. I wouldn't call it exactly 100% iconic, but without a doubt, some of these course, uh, some of these courses are absolute bangers to listen to. And I can't say that a Mario Kart game has had that many bangers in terms of its score since probably Mario Kart Wii. And then beyond that, it was probably Double Dash. Nothing against DS or Mario Kart 7, but their original course songs were not nearly as good in my opinion. These, however, I would call fantastic, phenomenal. Ones that I would say without a doubt make me very proud and happy to be a Mario Kart fan. I'm just I'm just so happy I get to play this game. After going through all the crap we went through from well, Double Dash wasn't an issue, but the crap I went through with Mario Kart Wii, with having to do DS earlier than I wanted to. With, oh god, blue shell, blue shell, blue shell, blue shell! Oh well, at least I don't stop driving. Yay! With all the crap that I had to go through just to get this whole project set up, it's just, I'm just so freaking happy that I get to get to this game finally. And we're gonna be here for, at the very least, it looks like we're gonna be here for at least maybe 40 or 50 episodes, because there is, there's gonna be a lot to do here. Because this game is absolutely massive and like i said that's 
all the stuff that I mentioned at the beginning of this episode is just an is just a setup because you don't even know how much stuff is in this game. All the stuff you can do online, set up tournaments, doing all that. It is just absolutely freaking massive. And I am beyond excited that I get to be able to play this game for you guys. Don't really need to see highlights you just saw. But it's all the same. Perfect score. And I will see you guys tomorrow when we take on the first of the Retro Cups. And I should give you guys a fair warning. After the first eight cups, there really isn't much of a guaranteed... Uh, the cups on the bottom are not always going to just be retro courses. There's going to be original courses. There's going to be new courses. Blah, blah, blah. I'll go more into that next episode. So thank you guys for joining me. I'm your friend, the neighborhood, and man 64 Join me next time when we do just that and take on the first of the retro cups, a.k.a. the Shell Cup, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. Who the hell knows? Until you meet again, my lovelies, a sayonara.